So people find out about their disease a number of ways. Some people have found out uh, in jail, some people have found out in the eMERGE department, some people have found out because their loved ones have tested positive. There's many different ways that people have found out about their status or their risk for HIV. So people respond in different ways when they're told of their HIV status. Some people will be very sad, some people are angry, some people will just need to have space and time to their, themselves. It's, uh, but what everybody needs is somebody to be caring about them and someone to refer them to the appropriate resources. I've been surprised when people have tested positive, but I've been more surprised when people test negative. I think now people are quite aware that they have to be 95% adherent, however that's pretty difficult for some people to adhere 95% for the general population taking something every single day, all of us forget. So when we tell people they have to be 95% adherent, sometimes they need support. So we're building systems and putting things in place to support people to take their medications every day. In terms of sticking to treatment, I think it, with anything, if you're expected to take it for the rest of your life, sometimes we're, we have things that happen, it's, sometimes it's easier to take it, sometimes it's not. Homelessness, as well as a variety of other social determinants of health impact on people's ability to take their medications, as well as taking medications also states that you actually have the disease and sometimes people just don't want other people to know or see their medications in their living environments also is a reason that people don't take their medications. Lots of people won't want to go to their GP or family doctor because they know their family doctor. So we like to have other options for people to be tested, as well as opportunities for anonymous testing. For instance, for healthcare providers, they may not want other people to know, or for a variety of different reasons, they might not want their spouse or to identify that. So it is, we want to just incorporate any possibility and encourage anybody uh, to come in for testing. I think what hasn't changed is there's still a lot of stigma around HIV and AIDS, but what has changed is in terms of the treatment and in terms of what we can offer people and that we do offer treatment to anybody, that there's no cost involved in treatment in British Columbia, which is fantastic. And we also know that it's not a death sentence. We have people in the public eye, such as Magic Johnson, that's in there living with HIV for 20 years. So it's a, that's kind of the changes that have happened within the last 20 years. I think the message is, is you cannot see HIV and if you're not using a condom, you're putting yourself at risk. So you need to treat everybody, unfortunately, as potentially um, affected with a disease until you can prove otherwise. And that means getting both sex partners tested. In terms of normalizing HIV testing, we need to ask everyone who has not had a test to be tested and not assume that we can look at somebody and know what they're actually participating in and ask everyone who's willing, who's sexually active, to take the test and request the test. Don't assume you're not positive. The only way of knowing is if you actually take the test. It's really important for people to know that 25% of people who are HIV positive are unaware of their disease status and are suspected to be responsible for about 75% of new infections. <laughs>